Hey guys, it's Mr. Valentin, and today we're going to talk about run-on sentences and how to use them effectively in your writing. So, uh, I'm going to start by talking about the book um, by Jason Reynolds called Look Both Ways, and it's nominated for the National Book Award 2019 in Young Adult Lit. Uh, Jason Reynolds wrote a number of stories, uh, such as A Long Way Down and Ghost. So, you're probably familiar with his work, but even if you're not, uh, in this book, we're introduced to uh, middle school. And at this middle school, school is being let out. It's the end of the day, and everyone's rushing home. Over the course of 10 chapters, you follow 10 different stories, and slowly but surely, the stories start weaving together. And it all revolves around a bus flying through the sky. But everyone seems too busy to notice too busy with picking boogers, too busy with dealing with cancer, too busy, too busy. So if you're looking for something completely different, almost like a collection of short stories, but a little more cohesive, then Look Both Ways might be a perfect book. So one thing that I'm noticing in writing is a lot of people trying to break the conventions of what we expect. And when we break conventions, that's really fantastic. You are trying to move outside of the expectations. That said, you often have to prove you understand the conventions before you break them. It's much easier to prove this when you fragment sentences, one word sentences, using those kind of things for a fact. It's much more difficult for run on sentences. If you can't prove that you understand style, it's very difficult to look at a sentence with a comma splice and say, oh my, that person has done it with style. And I'm starting to see that. So I thought, as I was reading Look Both Ways, if I could find any examples of run-on sentences that are used effectively. And so this is one very long run-on sentence. And what you'll notice is how stylistic it is, that it's not just a run-on sentence with words blurred together and no punctuation. You have to use it in conjunction with punctuation. You have to use it in conjunction with repetition. So this story comes, uh, it's about the third or fourth story in, and here we're finding out that a person um, is being bullied. And Marcus doesn't know how to handle that. He doesn't know how to tell his mother that he's being bullied. And ultimately, he has to pick on someone else in order to prove his worth. And so this comes towards the end of this chapter. And there's all this ideas of what he could have done. So let's take a look and let's see how long a run-on sentence can go on for. And maybe if Pia had known Stevie had picked up the pieces of her board, and snaps her skateboard, maybe if she'd known that he took them home with him, maybe if she'd known that he finally told his mother about Marcus, told her where all the bleach was going, why he had to wash his clothes every day to try to remove the stains and marks and words inked into his uniform, showed her the tie he'd cut off his neck and hid in the bottom of his bag, the one he'd said he'd lost, explained why he hadn't had an appetite, why his grades were slipping. Maybe if Pia had known that he had told his mother what he'd just done, what he didn't do, what he'd just seen. Maybe if Pia had known that his mother struggled to hold back a scream, helped him tape the deck back together, punish him, sent him to bed, woke him up early this morning for extra chores. Maybe if Pia had known that his mother, after meeting with principal pulled Stevie out of school early, drove him to what they guessed was Pia's school, the only public middle school in the area, sat stuck in traffic, lecturing him, paying no attention to the news on the radio, a school bus had fallen from the sky, made him stand outside the entrance and wait for Pia awkwardly. Maybe if Pia had known that Stevie was coming to apologize for his silence, maybe, 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 just maybe, Pia would have left through the back door. So that is all one continuous sentence. What we see is a remarkable control of conventions as the author breaks them. 
So we see this continual repetition. Notice, maybe, maybe, maybe. And that's reverberated through the entirety of this passage, all the things that he could have done, right? Um, he could have done much earlier. What we see throughout, we see all sorts of interjections. We see it right here with the M dash, the one he'd said he'd lost. We see it again a little bit later, another M dash, the only public middle school in the area. We see another interruption with this parentheses, a school bus had fallen from the sky. So there's a control of how the author is expending it. It's not merely just a run-on sentence with no punctuation. There is remarkable control of your conventions. And we see several different forms of repetition throughout this. We see it in the way that he starts to list information, what he didn't do, what he'd just seen. And that what begins to re reverberate throughout the text as well. And it all comes to a powerful conclusion right here with maybe, 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 just maybe. So importantly, if you're going to break the conventions, prove that you know them. Don't simply have a run-on sentence for the sake of having a run-on sentence. Find that repetition. Find deliberate intention. Because if you don't have intention with your run-on sentence, there's no point in using it. Thanks for watching.